Thank you for listening to my overview. And now let's get ready for a night of experiences, a journey into the synergy and syntony of Compass of Hope. To fertilize our minds and open our hearts, I am deeply honored to present our opening speaker, Professor Alexander Laszlo. Hi, Alexander. Hello. Oh my goodness, here I am. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cynthia. And what a treat it is to be here to co-create. And this is so nice because this is exactly the co-creator's convergence. And here we are engaging with each other in this play shop, this workshop, this exploration. And thank you so much for setting the stage for that. This is, this is serious, but it needs to be serious fun. This is where we can engage with uh, the, what a colleague of mine likes to talk about, meaning fun, meaning fun experiences. We are looking at today's engagement, all of us here, and it's such a treat. I mean, we have uh, Dr. Janet, whose smile is just lighting up the screen whenever I look. Uh, and uh, we have uh, Connie and Andrew, who will be putting the end of the bookmark at this, on this whole presentation, which is just such a treat as well. And we have all these great people who are going to be sharing from their heart. Not so much a conversation about the tricks of the trade, and here's how you go about it, here's the algorithm but it's really about embodying the change. Really that, you know, Gandhi's admonition to be the change you wish to see in the world. And this is what we're sharing with each other. What, what are the ways in which we can do this? We can be that change. And I think Compass of Hope really in, in this moment here is not just a, a uh, collaboration. It's not just a celebration. It's what I like to think of as a collaboration combination of collaboration and celebration, which truly fundamentally is about celebrating life. So I thought that rather than just look at me uh, holding forth here, I'm going to share with you some slides, which can be, I think, much more fun than just looking at my mug. <laughs> so here we go. Um, and let me pop this on the screen for you and hit play. Okay. So hopefully you can all see that. And there it goes. It's a little slow. Um, but what I would like to also share with you now, just with a few slides here, is this notion of thinking about hope beyond hopes. Hopefully that didn't make you too dizzy there. But uh, this idea of hope with capital H is very different than hopes. We have lots of hopes every day. Well, I hope I don't miss the bus. And I hope this thing is going to be on time. And I hope it's going to, that's different than having hope. Capital H. And that, I think, is what the Compass of Hope, the book, and all the sharing is about. How do we tap into that? How can we source that and be sorcerers? So we've just been celebrating our supermoon, right? Um, and it's still going on. This, this, this the close blue moon, the supermoon, this it doesn't happen very often. And this is about how do we, how do we bring in that avatar mindset? Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this term, Cynthia. But uh, I'm kidding. Uh, this comes from Cynthia's <laughs> work. Oh, I'm not muted. The avatar mindset. No, you're not, but that's fine. <laughs> Lovely laugh. <laughs> that was great. Um, and so I want to share with you a little bit what I am going to be looking at or inviting you to engage in, which are these kind of these four gestures or movements. First is to open your heart. And then we can think about changing your mind. And then you can think about engaging your life. And then you can think about evolving your world. And if you think about these four gestures, the first is really a gesture of relax. Open your heart, breathe, be here now. And the second, second one about change your mind is, is a willingness to let go, a willingness to not know everything, to live with ambiguity, a willingness to play. The um, third one, engage your life, is a willingness or a gesture to a gesture of reaching out. Engage your life, reach out. Don't 
don't only stay within your world, reach out, connect. And the evolve your world is the gesture of stepping forward. It's now, let's bring this into action. And often I think just having these frames, opening your heart, changing your mind, and Cynthia is showing there also a little bit, and I don't know if you can see, because my, my screen is what's up there, but um, uh, we can come back to that as well. Um, so these are things which help you move. Now let's look at this specifically. If you first change your thinking, this is very key to all the book that, that we have put together, first change your thinking to be more positive and creative. And if we can do that, everything else follows. Then the world changes, right? And it's, it is so. It's not as if just by thinking it or wishing it, the world becomes. But our engagement with it does shift. And sensing with the heart precedes reasoning with the mind. This is what I want to really emphasize with Sintini. We'll be getting to Sintini in just a moment. I won't make this, it's not, not a lecture, but it's just something that I want, hopefully you can play with as we move forward with some of these ideas. How does sensing with the heart proceed reasoning with the mind? Well, partly it should. And then now the next part is let's see how. So this is something that uh, Buckminster Fuller said. He said, I'm not a thing, a noun. I seem to be a verb. Isn't that cool? This is his full little quote. He said, this is Buckminster Fuller saying, I live on earth at present and I don't know what I am. I know I am not a category. I'm not a thing, a noun. I seem to be a verb, an evolutionary process, an integral function of the universe. So how do we verb ourselves? And I love to use the expression, how do we human well? Right? So this is the verb that I, I play with. How do we human well? Especially when a lot of the world that we're living in is characterized as VUCA and RUPT. Some of you may know these terms, but this is really at the essence of what Cynthia was sharing with at the very beginning. So the scientists will talk about VUCA contexts and situations, describing them as being volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous kind of like scientific terms for how things, well, not terribly complex terms, but still they're, they're, it's hard to relate to them necessarily. But when we bring this home and we experience the kind of angst that, that Cynthia was talking about and how do we find hope in, in these kind of situations, often these are described as RUPT, R-U-P-T. Now that stands for rapid, unpredictable, paradoxical, and tangled. These are the experiences and encounters. And when we find ourselves in situations, encounters, experiences that are like that, that are rapid, unpredictable, paradoxical, and tangled, often it leads to a sense of hopelessness. What do we do? How can we handle this? Okay, so there is, there, there are ways of moving. It doesn't mean through the mind. Remember, this is not the idea of coming first through the mind. It does mean eventually changing your mind. Yes, I want to get there, but the first step is with the heart, then it's with the mind. So the path of Sintini, this is kind of like a little flow. Can, you can think about uh, what the, often in, uh, in the, the Chinese characters for crisis are, uh, or the word or the term crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger and the other one opportunity. And so the path of Sintini is to transmute our VUCA world, the volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world, transmute it into greater dynamics of harmony. That's the path of syntony. So what does syntony actually mean? So syntony, there's some definitions. Now, this is just a little technical, but let's look at these definitions because it's a, it's a powerful word. Is conscious intention aligned with evolutionary purpose? Right, so what does that mean? The embodiment and manifestation of conscious evolution. Also, we are, we are the embodiment of that. How can we do that? How do we embody it? So, it's a purposeful, creative aligning and tuning with the evolutionary flows of one's environment, one's milieu. Hmm. How can we do that? That's the quest of Sintony. In a more technical area of evolutionary systems thinking, uh, Sintony means evolutionary consonants. That's like the shortest, most concise definition, evolutionary consonants. The occurrence and persistence of an evolutionarily tuned dynamic regime. You go to the 
unabridged, the Oxford English Dictionary, unabridged version, you'll find synteny there. It means resonant in radio engineering. But people, like, you know, frankly, I found this term first in conversation with Barbara Marks Hubbard. She uses this concept of synteny, and she informed me that she found it in the writings of Pierre de Chardin. And after that, I found it in the writings of Eric Jansch, who wrote Design for Evolution and the Self-Evolving Universe. This is a play of synteny. And so I want to share now, I'm just wrap, wrap this up, so I want to be able to move on so other people have a chance to be able to share their, uh, their views on this as well, on the, the compass of hope. But there are five principles that I think are really important for the, the presence and practice of synteny. And so one is passion. So this vibrant, intense, and compelling enthusiasm, passion, engagement. A second one is integrity. And I, I think of integrity as dignity and congruency with your value. It's a kind of worthiness, honor and respect. These are often old terms that we missing in much of our modern world. Balance, you know, I think of it as spin control and flow control so that we don't been out of balance when we do that. And Hinti and I and a few others have talked about the whirling dervishes and their dance and staying in that. It's not the control of the situation. It's this control of oneself in the flow, control in the flow, in the situations. Grace, simple, elegant, simple elegance, presence, kindness, a composed way of being. You can't do this if you're frenetic. You can't do this if you jump on your horse and ride off in all directions. You want to be in a composed frame. And it does mean flow. So sometimes that composer doesn't mean just being slow. Sometimes it means fast, but sometimes it means being slow. It's tuning your actions and attitudes to harmonize with your surrounding. These are these practices or principles of synteny. And here are some dimensions of synteny that just want to touch on these and then I'll, I'll, I'll move on here. So um, there's personal, this what I call intrapersonal thinking. How are you with yourself? Are you in balance? Is there this integrity? Is there a grace? Is there flow with yourself? With yourself, that's intrapersonal thinking. Then there's interpersonal thinking. How are with other human beings, other people in the world? Are you in a dysfunctional work environment? Are you okay with your neighbors, etc.? This is that human world. But then there's the more than human world. How are you in syntony with the living world that is beyond the human dimension? And then there's a time dimension, the balance between our relationship with our ancestors and future generations. And would our ancestors be proud of us? Have conversation with your ancestors. And also think of yourself as a future ancestor or like an ancestor in training. Have conversation with those yet to come who aren't born yet. Are you in balance with them? Would they be happy with what you're doing now? And finally, there's pan-cosmic synchrony. This is the connection with the deeper flows of the universe, of the cosmos in its emergence. And I know that Andrew and Connie and others are going to be talking about this very deep dimension of balance and of being as well. When you have all these five dimensions in synchrony among themselves, not just one at a time, but all together, that is a true evolutionary synteny. So this is it. This is the, the hope that we can engage in this through discipline, through training, through practice. I mean, this is what Cynthia talks about a lot. This is the discipline of the mind, but it does start with the heart. I love this little quote from David Bohm. Individuality is only possible if it unfolds from wholeness. I leave you with this Apache blessing. May the sun bring you new energy by day. May the moon softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breeze blow new strength into your being. May you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of your life. Ashe and thank you.